In the last episode, we took a look at how Nmap actually works. What does it mean when you scan a port? What does it look like when you come down to Wireshark? But we do understand that there is a bit of information missing and that's how to use Wireshark by itself. So in this episode, we're going to cover the basics of Wireshark and what actually Wireshark looks like and then look at a PCAP file and what that even means. So again, I have Chris with me here. What's up, Ben? Good and he's going to show us all the things Wireshark, what a PCAP file is and who uses it. Uh, I'll just shut up and let Chris do his magic. Awesome. Great, Ben. Okay, again, thanks for having me back. And uh, let's actually dig into some Wireshark. So if you haven't downloaded Wireshark, wireshark.org, go ahead and get out there and get it. Uh, it's the world's most popular packet analysis tool. So the whole purpose is to help us to see what's actually going on in the wire. Now, from a cybersecurity pr perspective, lots of different ways to use it. You're going to see this thing on CTFs. Uh, you're going to see this, uh, especially if you're doing any kind of blue teaming or analysis, but it's also important even from an attacker's perspective to know this is what I'm actually putting in there out there on the wire for an IDS IPS system or for a SOC analyst to find, right? We want to be aware of what we're kicking out there. So that's all, another reason why we want to get make use of Wireshark. Wireshark is actually free. So if you want to test this out, you want to use it, go ahead and download it and follow along. Absolutely. Open source. It's a fantastic tool uh, and a great community around it as well. So now just to give you just a high level of, of what's going on here. So um, when you first open up Wireshark, you have a three pane view. OK, so the packets up on top uh, line by line. Each one of these lines sim is an example of a packet. This is the summary view up here. When I click on one of them on the lower right or left, sorry, on the lower left, I can see the details for that packet. And then on the right side, I see the hexadecimal and ASCII characters that uh, make that packet. So if you just want to look at the raw data that encompasses a packet, your hexadecimal values here are the actual values that are on the wire. Wireshark just takes those values and turns them into readable fields over here on the left. And then the summary of those fields is up on top. Okay, so kind of three ways of looking at the same thing. Very high level a little more detailed, and then super deep dive into the weeds. Okay, so packet by packet, um, we can see what's actually happening on the wire. Now, there's a lot going on. If you open up Wireshark, you start a capture, and you just kick it off, you're going to see there's a ton of stuff that can happen on the wire. So how can we filter down for some of what we're interested in? Well, up on top here, this is where we have a filter field. And Ben, we'll talk more about this later, about sp specific filters that are going to be good ones to save. But basically, this is where I can say, do I want to filter for TCP? Do I want to filter for UDP? Do I want to filter for an IP address? Do I want to filter for uh, a combination of things? So this is where I can create filters that will just show me the packets of interest. Okay. Now, Wireshark also, there's a lot of different features in here. You can notice I got some buttons up here. These are for common filters that I use and I want to save for later. Um, but uh, pro, as well as profiles, uh, I don't know if you can see this in here. Let me tuck this in a little bit better. But down here on the profile, you can see I've got like this TCP plane thing. But also, I can select other profiles that allow me to tune the Wireshark interface for the protocol or exercise that I'm doing. So, for example, if I'm uh, doing cybersecurity stuff, I want to have certain fields and columns more available to me. But if I'm troubleshooting a problem, then maybe I want to have some other visibility into the into the protocols. Okay, so now that we have a good overview of what the actual analyzer looks like and the different components in it, let's actually do a little bit of a dig. So uh, we ran two types of scans, Ben. I first did a stealth scan, and then I did a TCP full connect scan. So let's take a look at the stealth SYN scan. So this is the first packet that got, got kicked out. This was a, just an FTP Hey, are you there? Are you running an FTP service? And then after that, I did 8080 and so on. Let's come back here. I just want to show everybody, this is the what's actually kicked out on the wire. And if I was looking for you, enumerating a system, doing some active recon, here's what I would look for, all right? So coming in here, this is the details of that SIN. There's a few things that jump out to me immediately. The first, window, 1024 byte window. Now, this is a default Nmap thing. So in the SINs, it's going to say, don't send me any more than 1024 bytes at once. That's what my TCP stack is saying to you, Ben. I'm not just tapping on the door to see if your port's open. 
I'm also telling you, 1024 is my limit. Don't send me anything more than that. But at the same time, I'm giving you a TCP option that is 1460. So what this means is you can send me a 1460 maximum segment within one packet. My TCP receive buffer is 1024. I can only receive 1024 at once. So it's kind of an interesting thing that doesn't really make sense in the real world. Why would I tell you to, it's almost like telling you two different things. I can receive 1460. No, but I can receive 1024. So this is an Nmap thing. Nmap does this. If I saw this on the wire, immediately I would know somebody's running Nmap. So, so this is a good indication for someone on the blue team side that's receiving this to know this is a behavior of a port scan, someone scanning our network. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So that's a signature. So I want people to be aware of this because if you just do uh, an Nmap scan without any further options, like making it a full connect scan, or if you just do just a raw stealth scan, that's easier to pick up. This is right off the wire. So, and again, why is TCP important? Because these are the signatures and map is kicking off. And this is going to be what a blue teamer is going to look for. How are we feeling? Good so far. The, the, this is one of the things that like, I think a lot of red teamers, people that want to get into red teaming need to keep in mind. This is how you start alarming people. This is how you start getting caught. I'm sure, you know, people that are doing red teaming know this, but people that want to jump into red teaming and always wonder how did I get caught? This is a good way of getting caught pretty much. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In fact, for me, I, I want everybody to know, um, if I take this window size, let me just take this. I'm dragging and dropping right now, Ben. I'm just literally grabbing that field, dropping it up top, and dropping it. So right there, TCP size, window size value is 1024. And if I do and tcp.flags.sin equals equals one, odds are if I get any matches, I could take that filter and I could run it against a terabyte's worth of traffic. If I ever see any options, very, very 99% um, certainty, that's going to be an Nmap scan. And that's easy. You can get your IP band or whatever you know, the blue team decides to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or if you're, let's just say you got a foothold into an environment and then you're trying to do some lateral movement and yeah, trying to internal. find an adjacent system, right? And that's more where I come in. Sometimes I'm doing um, analysis for my clients from a troubleshooting perspective. Something isn't working well. And I throw a couple of these filters just to check to see, and I can say, hey, your printer is doing an Nmap scan. <laughs> That's a good example of it. I was saying, why is, my, why is this device that's supposed to be a printer for our network trying to make connections to the other devices on here? It's a really good point to make. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be in, behind the IDS IPS. So those systems might not be looking in that area for this. But if you have a savvy blue teamer that is doing these captures and running these types of filters against it, Good way to get caught. So we, we briefly talk about filters, and I know you put some up there. That's something we're going to do another episode. Yes. So so if you're watching this, you want to learn more about filters, come back. The next episode is going to be covering all that. I think we're going to do the top 10 filters that you should know about in Wireshark, and then uh, we'll see where that goes. Chris, is there anything else you want to show me? I want to show you so much, but let's just keep this one short for now. <laughs> let, let's, let's, uh, let's get to those filters on the next episode. That sounds fun. Cool. Awesome. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. 